些秘密是吧？Good afternoon. Uh, I want to start here uh, with a statement, and that is, I stand by my statement from the other day, the one that was released. I fully support the investigation into the allegations, and as that investigation proceeds, I'll continue to work hard to promote and reinforce a culture of compliance in our organization, just like I have for the last eight years. And I'll also continue to work hard on bringing us here at the University of Arizona the most successful basketball season we can possibly have this year. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have about our team season. And, and before、uh, I give you that opportunity, I'm, sur- I'm、uh, centered here between you know, two guys that obviously have great meaning towards our season. You know, Dusan, I'll start with him、uh, on my right. You know,、uh, these days,、uh, not too often do you have a chance to coach a senior, but a senior who's been through so many big games and has had such a prominent role as he's had、uh, through the first three years of his time. You know, he's a great example of、uh, what college basketball is about, and that you know he's coming down the home stretch,、uh, received his degree here from the University of Arizona, and with English not being his first language, and I think Dusan's had a great off season. And I think he's set to have a great final year, like a lot of our recent players. You know, Alonzo、uh, to my left. You know, in my mind,、uh, he's positioned himself to be one of the best at, at what he does. He's been through his fair share of、uh, adversity.、Uh, him and I have talked a lot this off season, and I think our hope together is that he can have one of those seasons that are memorable, but where he can string it together from start to finish, day one all the way to the last game. And、uh, I think it's been very obvious that these two guys, and with some help from others,、uh, Parker in particular, they've、uh, given us some great leadership over the summer and here at the beginning、uh, of our season. Alonzo, how have you tried to help this team maintain its focus through this last week to concentrate on basketball?、Uh, just us coming together. I understand this is a tough situation. It's a little bit of adversity, but. You know, it'll help us grow stronger, or maybe bring us closer together, and just try to be a leader and help us focus on control, focus on what we can control, and that's how much better we can get now that practice is starting, and you know, and try to lead this stuff to be the best year we can have. I assume that being on the court for us, Sean, that 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 helps you kind of go along with business as usual, rather than have the distractions. This is a fun, exciting time of year as a college basketball fan, and、uh, you know I think as a team, you know it's up until now, you know you're around each other on a weekly basis, but these guys will, will tell you that you know you're you're with them for a day, you're with them for back-to-back days, and all of a sudden you disappear, and for home visits, the recruiting aspect of things, sometimes just the fact that in the off season we're only allowed to be around each other. Other for、uh, an extended period of time, certain amount of time. Now, the difference is you were around each other a lot. We're around each other every day.、Uh, clearly, we're building our、uh, our identity as a team, teaching our younger players. You know, one of the things that's striking here early about our about our team, we do have a few returners, and these two guys are an example of that. But we also have quite a few newcomers, and I, I think we feel that just. You know, with the, the names of drills and the early part of practice, where freshmen, regardless of how talented they are, there is, a, I think, a, you know, a change from where they once were to where they're at now. And in particular, even though we went to Spain this summer and we had some extra practices,、uh, they don't really reflect what we're doing right now. So、uh, we're relying on on guys like Alonzo and Dusan to. You know, set the tone for what we do and how we do things as we've done here in the past. Along those lines, maybe how you're holding up, given you have a big family, extended, if you will. How are you holding up, given that you have an extended family around you? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm focused on our season right now. I mean, I think you know, for us, we have a lot at stake、uh, as a basketball team. We have、uh, experience. 
we have size. Like I just mentioned, we have a lot of exciting newcomers. You know, like last year, and I talked a lot about this last year with uh, Kobe Raleigh and Lowry. You know, they were talented newcomers as freshmen, but we were very fortunate. They were also great kids that worked hard every day. You know, they were three of our best practice players. They didn't act as if they knew everything. Uh, they were willing to listen and to learn, and that was reflective. That helped us be successful through a lot of adversity in our non-conference last year. If you remember a year ago, you only remember the ending, but we had uh, Alonzo who was out, Kadeem missed some games, Parker was out for uh, over a month, and yet we were still able to hold serve, and uh, I think the best kind of came out in us late in February, early in March. So with us, you know, this year, obviously, we have one setback with Raleigh, who uh, will miss eight to 12 weeks, depending on, you know, how it heals. You know, he broke his foot playing a pickup game, so we'll, we'll work our way through that with him. But in, in the meantime, it gives some other people uh, an opportunity to practice more, to get more reps. People like Emmanuel Acott, Brandon Randolph, you know, they have a, a different role without Raleigh being out there. And at the same time, you know, we hope that Raleigh will be able to uh, heal and, and get back as fast as he can. Can these practices almost be therapeutic where you guys can just get on the court and focus on basketball and not the outside noise, so to speak, as far as like allegations and stuff like that? Yes. And how, 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 can that, how does that work? I just answered it when he asked me the same question. So when you look forward, how do you go, when you go forward to the season, do you have any concern going forward that anybody could be declared ineligible or are there sanctions that could hit this particular season? I'm excited about our season, our team. You know, I... I uh, read my statement here a second ago. You know, for us, it's it's about coaching our team. It's these guys about competing, practicing hard every day, and looking forward to the challenges ahead. What did you learn about the team and the trip? More better than you thought? A lot of work to do? Well, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, the trip, you know, pales into comparison on, on the fact that we uh, were part of, you know, close, not part of, but happened to be in Barcelona when a terrorist attack came. You know, I mean, that's the starting point uh, for this team, that you go on a, a trip like that. And, you know, clearly we, we uh, had a chance to see Barcelona play a couple of games. Uh, the practices, the time we spent together gave us a big advantage to get to know each other and sets the tone for what we're doing now. But I think uh, these guys will speak to that, that when you're in the city, then when that happens, puts a lot of different things in perspective. Tucson, what has been your takeaway from this first week of practice? Uh, like Coach earlier said, uh, we have a, obviously we have a great talent in this year's team. Um, all freshmen that came this year are extremely talented players. Um, I think we had a highly competitive week of first week of practice, and all guys are, you know, ready to and happy to learn from from older guys. Uh, I think it's up to us. Uh, Alonzo Parker and I to, you know, show them uh, the system here in, in, in this program to you know, honor the process every every day on and off the court, uh, and I and I think we we are in a good way, I mean we are in a good way to to uh, have a great team especially in March. So uh, I'm I'm really excited about this season and I'm excited about our first games and that's pretty much it. Sean, you spoke really highly of some of the freshmen last season. Do you see some similarities in some of the newcomers this year? Very much so, and, and I think Alonzo and Dusan will speak to that. Um, you know, again, our, our freshman class a year ago of, uh, of Lowry, Kobe, and Raleigh were very instrumental in our team's success. I mean, sometimes I look back at a year ago, the fact that we were 32-5, and five, uh, I don't know if, if we were ever or I was ever a part of a team that overcame so much with the injuries and the different things we fought through. But it wasn't just their talent as basketball players on the court. It was it was how much they loved the game and how easy they were to deal with coaching them, uh, the type of teammates that they were. And I think this year uh, this class is very reflective. You know, I'll start with Alex Barcelo. A lot of people in our state know Alex because he had such great success. But Alex is an incredible student first, you know, and uh, – he takes care of business in the classroom, but it be it's become apparent early on here in practice. He has a toughness and a physicality about him that will really allow him to be successful uh, as a freshman. And he could play either the one or the two. And uh, we've played him at both positions here right now. Uh, I think the hardest adjustment from high school 
to our program is the point guard because they're in charge of the four other players in addition to themselves. And Alex is going through that part, but uh, these guys will tell you he's physically strong, he's tough, and uh, he's going to be a really good addition to what we, we have. You know, Brandon Randolph, uh, if you've watched us in Spain, I think he showed his immense talent, you know, not just because he can really shoot it, but uh, athletically, he's caught me by surprise. You know, uh, I think as he's been a part of our strength and conditioning program and has worked over the last four or five months with uh, Coach Rounds, you know, his athletic, athleticism has, has kind of uh, boosted. And um, he's more explosive, he's stronger. He does a lot of good things out on the court. You know, part of what the gift that Brandon has is he has an opportunity to play against Alonzo every day. And that's what you want in a, in a team and in a program where, kind of like Dusan mentioned, your practices reflect your games because the people you're playing with and against are very good. So, you know, th this freshman class gives us a lot of depth. You know, I'll, I'll continue. Emmanuel Acott, who was the last addition to this year's class, uh, is as versatile of, of a player as we've had. You know, he could play any number of positions, uh, incredible passer, plays extremely hard. I think he has a chance to be a defensive player along the lines of Rondé Hollis Jefferson. You know, Rondé could guard, you know, I'll never forget Gonzaga at home, great game here in McHale. He guarded uh, Pangos and Wiltshire, the four-man or center and the point guard, all within a four or five-minute period of time and overtime, you know. Emmanuel Acott, he has the makings of being a defensive player like that. Um, I really, very similar as I would describe uh, Emmanuel. Again, just somebody that's a great teammate, very versatile in his approach. Uh, I think his athleticism would also stand out to these two guys. You know, he's able to rebound, play multiple positions. And I, I keep coming back to the multiple positions because when young players can play more than one, it makes our team much, much deeper and you could play through foul trouble and versa, uh, you know, these these uh, moments that, that sometimes creep up. Adversity hits, you, you, you're more flexible because you can call on them to do more than just one thing. And then last but not least is DeAndre. Um, you know, I, I've never coached a player like DeAndre. Um, I don't think these two guys have seen anybody like him. I don't know uh, if you're aware, but and he's probably right now, I'd say, seven foot, 260, and... Um, his body fat is probably close to six percent, and uh, he did a he had a max vertical jump here a couple weeks ago. I think forty three and a half inches. Which, to put that in perspective, with his size, you know that means he touches the top of the backboard. I've never seen anybody touch the top of the backboard. We've had Aaron Gordon, we've had Nick Johnson, and all due respect to these two guys, they don't jump as high as, as those two. <laughs> but um, but I think to see DeAndre's athleticism on somebody as big as he is. Um, you don't you don't oftentimes um, see that. So you know DeAndre's learned how to work hard. Um, thing that I'm the most pleased about with him is, I mean he's really just done everything we've asked of him on and off the court. Um, and you know it's I, mean, I think if you talk to him, he'll tell you he's probably never worked harder. But that's one of the big reasons he came here is is to be pushed and to put put himself in that highly competitive environment, which I think in that in his case would take him to to some great heights. But clearly uh, with some of the players that we've lost, uh, this is a pivotal class for us. And, you know, Dylan Smith would be the other player that sometimes isn't talked about a lot, but, you know, Dylan practiced with us a year ago. And again, he brings a lot of intangibles to the table as another guard who's with us every single day. So, you know, that's the group of guys that weren't here last year. We're excited about them. And as equally as I'm excited about the new new talent, you know, it oftentimes comes down to the leadership and the improvement of, of people like Alonzo and Dusan because they have been through virtually everything you can be a part of in college basketball, and, and they're going to set the tone for us. Coach Miller, you guys have been through a lot. Uh, what happened last week, what happened in Spain. How is this going to affect the season, and how do you keep the young players, I guess, away from the noise, and how is this going to affect their season this year? You know, one of the things that, that I believe um, you have a responsibility to do as a coach in college sports is, is making sure that the guys understand how to deal with the ups and the downs of, of our game, but really how it reflects life. And it's not always going to be uh, happy. It's not always going to go your way. Some of the things that you're going to strive for um, might not happen. 
but in many in many regards how you deal with those times is a definition of really who you are and uh, you know in, in our day today in 2018 it's a much different world there's a lot of people that have voices through social media and uh, you know if you're an athlete at a very high level an NFL player an NBA player I'm sure if you're competing for a, a college national championship as a football program you know we all preach the same thing and that is you know you have to eliminate the clutter you have to kind of understand that your circle has to be tight you love people you talk to people but only we truly know what happens on a daily basis inside of our program and this is an example for both of these guys to grow and learn and uh, in life as they leave Arizona they'll be much much more suited to deal with things that, that happen. And in our best attempt to always have a great life and be perfect, uh, sometimes the unexpected can happen. Alonzo, what's the end goal uh, for the team this season and, and as well as yourself? Absolutely for us to compete and you know, go to a Final Four and win a national title. Um, that's why we're all here, because of the great you know, story tradition of this program. And you know we're here to carry that on. We understand it's not easy. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of us coming together. And, um, you know, we're excited for this journey we have together. And, you know, we're going to work really hard to try to make that come true. Do you have something to prove this being your third year, or are you don't <clears throat> just going to play basketball? You, I'm saying you specifically. Well, the, the ultimate goal to, to prove is to prove that we can win a national championship here, um, which we're good enough to do. And, you know, we, we have a great coach that's leading us. And, you know, if we follow, uh, follow suit of him, then um, I think that we can have some great things happen for us. So. Is this situation you guys are in compared to what you went through last year, the sort of the cloud that's over the team right now? Or is it totally it's another. Different? It's another thing. It's some adversity for us. It's nothing we're you know we're new to. So um, we're going to focus on what we can can control right now, and that's how much better we can get every single day in practice, in a highly competitive environment, and pushing each other and trying to get the best out of each other. And that, I think this will all bring us closer together in the end. What's the number one thing, Alonzo, maybe that you learned last year from dealing with adversity? <laughs> Um, you know, you got to be strong. You got to learn how to fight back. Um, it's not going to go your way. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. Uh, but it's how you respond to it. It shows like who you are as a person. And um, I think that we have a chance to respond to this by, you know, by focusing on us as a team and coming together and, and you know, really pushing each other to new heights. Sean, if everything holds true as it did before the season in terms of your predictions, pressures on being number one if you are number one or number two. You know, I think the pressure to, to play in our program, uh, the, the pressure to coach in our, in our program really comes from within. Um, we're in a high expectation environment. Uh, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that. Um, I think we, we all know what, what our own goals are. And uh, I don't know if they've changed really a whole lot. It's, uh, you know, it's like hitting a bullseye, though. You, know, it's, uh, you, know, you start by trying to hit the board, and then all of a sudden you get closer and closer. And it's almost sometimes you take for granted that, you know, you're right around it. But to actually hit that thing, you know, you need some good fortune. Uh, you need a lot of working parts all moving in the same direction. And that's really the time of year that we're at right now, to put it all together. I think to learn more about each other and, uh, and to just take it one day at a time, one practice at a time, and, you know, continue to, to improve. I think we have great belief in that what we do works. And I think that uh, we've knocked on the door of some really incredible, special things. And at the same time, we talk a lot about this. We've also accomplished some great things as well. But this is a new beginning. You know, the past is the past. And uh, I think for us, moving forward is, is uh, our quest. And uh, to move forward, we clearly want to be, uh, you know, really successful, not only on the court, but also in the classroom. Does Austin's role change as a result of both being out or any other way you're reorganizing this conference? At the moment, uh, Austin Carroll is able to uh, be out on the court. So is he taking any more of what Luke used to do? Or I know he did a lot of stuff for you anyway, but I didn't know. As as no, in, in our situation, I mean, we have a lot of different roles uh, defined throughout our staff. You know that. I mean, everybody from our graduate assistants to you know, director of basketball operations, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, but right now in the situation that we're in, Austin Carroll is allowed uh, to be out on the court. Well, one thing um, I didn't see in that statement was any, I was curious, like there were references to multiple coaches possibly allegedly being involved. And I just wondered if that meant anything. I'll talk, I'll, if you have any yeah. basketball question at all, I'll be more than happy to answer. I, 
Can you talk about where the where you stand with your 2018 recruiting class and how that might look going forward? You know, we're, we're hard at it. Obviously, you know this by NCAA rules. I'm not allowed to comment on anybody that hasn't signed a national letter of intent. <coughs> but, uh, you know, re recruiting is the lifeblood of any program in college sports, and uh, we have our eyes on that very closely every day. What do you think about uh, only playing USC and UCLA once this year and the possibility of the Pac-12 uh, expanding the number of conferences? You know, um, I think the Pac-12 has, has really just done an incredible job on the basketball side of things. Um, I don't know if we get enough credit for uh, the number of great players that we've had in recent years. Last year's NBA draft is a great example. I mean, you start looking at the top between Markel Fultz, Lowry Markinen. I mean, those are, t those are two two guys right there with freshman Lonzo Ball, three of the top seven picks come from the Pac-12, all freshmen. You know, T.J. Leaf is another one. And uh, I think these guys are well aware of it. You know, every day, every game that you play, you're playing against somebody on that other team who's got a great opportunity to play in the NBA. Tremendous coaches, a lot of programs. And uh, I think this year will be very similar to the recent years where when it all ends and you watch this year's NBA draft, I think we'll have quite a few players that are that are picked. I think last year, us and the ACC were tied for the most picks out of the 60 that were picked, which is uh, quite a testament to the talent and I think, uh, you know, the high power of the Pac-12. In terms of the round robin, that's, that's uh, what we decided years ago. It just happens to be this year's turn is that it's UCLA and SC versus ASU in Arizona, where we only play one time. So uh, it's not as if that was done on purpose. That was a more about the system that we're in. And a lot like uh, some other things that have happened recently in, in college basketball in terms of scheduling, I believe that two conferences have already committed to 20 games. I'm sure that's something that we're looking at hard and to determine whether that's something as a conference that we'll do in the future. But right now the Pac-12 is, is very healthy when you consider their recent success as teams, Oregon going to the Final Four, you know, last year, and then obviously the uh, the recent NBA draft speak for themselves. Could you want to play 22 teams? Just, just to follow that up, could you, could you play? Would you be up to playing 22 if it came to that in the Pac-12? Yeah. 22 games? I mean, uh, if you played a whole double round robin, yeah. You know, you know I, we haven't talked about that, so I'm not sure. On so last year in the tournament. Uh, especially against Xavier in the last eight minutes of the game. You were really asking for the ball quite a bit down the stretch, willing to take the big shot. Do you see anybody else on the team um, that has that kind of uh, personality about them that's not afraid of taking big shots when necessary? Uh, I think we have guys that are plenty capable of being able to make shots and, and make big shots um, when the opportunity arises to them. Um, I think that's kind of our question to answer about whether a guy has that mindset or not. We're still learning about each other a lot. Um, but I understand we'll be executing well at that time and trying to figure out who's to take that shot when that time comes. Sean, it's been said in the last month or so that you probably have the best team you've ever had going into a season. Your assessment on that, and can you maybe expound on that if you believe that? You know, I'm not sure if that's the case right now. I think we have the makings of something special, but, you know, it's just too early to tell. You know, there's a lot of factors, some of which is, you know, we all need good fortune. You know, Raleigh getting injured isn't something that, that you would want to have happen uh, to someone who made a, a decision to return to school. And, uh, you know, you have to have health. Uh, you have to have younger players that, that grow by leaps and bounds each week because uh, the, our game has never been more for the younger player. You know, uh, freshmen, a lot like last year, and we, we've used this example a couple of times in, in uh, this session. If you really think about the role that Lowry, Kobe, and, and Raleigh played on last year's success, it was instrumental. So um, it's a balancing act on this year's team. I, I do think, Steve, the one thing that we have going for us is we have that blend that you want to have, and that is youthful talent, willing learners that are youthful, but also the veterans, guys that have been through the battles, guys like Dusan, Parker, and Alonzo that have been in big, big games, know how hard practice is, know what it feels like to play a game on the road in college basketball. So I think it's how all that comes together, the blend of the new and the old, will determine if our, our team has a chance to be special. Uh, we're certainly not there yet, but uh, hopefully we can, we can get there.
When you were talking about recruiting before, do you still expect to sign maybe two or three guys in November, or do you think the way things are going it might be something you, you pick up in the spring more when things kind of play out? Or? I'm, you know, I'm not sure about that. Dusan, what is your biggest goal um, this season besides uh, individual? I mean, pretty much, uh, like Alonzo said, in order for me to fulfill my individual goals, uh, we need to have a successful year as a team. So just competing for the national championship and you know, going to the final four would be you know, our ultimate goal. And you know, that's something that we all, uh, if we went there, that we're going to all have a benefit from there. So, uh. you know, I think Kadeem Allen's a great example of, of sometimes what we talk a lot about but isn't often talked enough about you know in the media and Kadeem if you think about him he, he averaged less than 10 points per game and yet he got picked in the NBA draft and he's a senior not only is he a senior but he's a redshirt senior and you know everybody kind of speculates that the older you are the less likely you have a chance to be successful so I think the last part of it is, and obviously, you know, Kadeem's with the Boston Celtics right now, but the feedback that I've gotten, he's done, you know, a great job. They love him. And, and the, part of what they love about him is he has all the intangibles of a winner. And uh, he was a part of some great success. I, I think back to the first year, and uh, Dusan would have been here with him when, when Kadeem came in. You know, there were times we wondered if he was going to be able to make it at Arizona. He's a long way from home. Uh, school's difficult, the challenges of, of being able to learn our system. Is he a point guard? Is he a two? But he grew about as much as any player that we've ever had. And I think to see him get what he, what he has on the table right now through all of his hard work and sacrifice, nobody embodied the qualities of with team success comes the individual accolades more than Kadeem. The way he practiced, as unselfish as he was, cared about one thing, winning. And uh, you know you see where, where that where that got him again, to be a senior and to average less than ten points a game, be six foot two, and have a chance to be in the NBA, is quite a testament to him, and it's something we're very very proud of. And as I look at Alonzo and Dusan, you know the longer you're here in college, you learn some things that I think will be invaluable for their careers afterwards. You know it's not just being able to shoot or rebound, but it's being able to handle adversity being able to learn how to work hard every day, sacrifice. And, uh, and that's really what the beginning of a season's about, to teach our team that and hopefully uh, bring us together. I know it's early, but when you talk about missing Raleigh, uh, you maybe could look at the roster and say, well, maybe that is Brandon or, or, or Emmanuel, a bigger opportunity. Or, is that in play, or, or who else do you kind of look at to maybe help you from those? Eight to 12 weeks. Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, Brandon and, and Emmanuel, you know, they, they play either wing position, and uh, both guys are not only incredibly talented, but have uh, they've, they've embraced everything that, that we've asked them to on and off the court, and uh, they've hit the ground running. Probably saw that a little bit by how both of those guys played in Spain. You know, to me, they're ready for college. Uh, it's just a matter of them continuing to learn the system, but thing that I love about our practice environment at the moment is we have battles. You know, when red versus blue happens, you know, it, it has great meaning and it's, uh, it's not tilted in favor of one team over the next. It's very balanced. And I think over time that will bring out the best in, in uh, those younger guys to get them the most ready as we can. Alonzo, kind of touching on, on what Coach talked about, about adversity, how do you feel it could help as a team and yourself as a leader on this team, bring this team together and feel closer. What's going on right now? Both, whether it's an injury on the court or something off the court, like what's going on as well. Oh, just we under, we have an understanding in our program that you know when some when we're faced with adversity or somebody goes down, you have the next man up. So um, that next man in that position, and that understanding that it's Raleigh, it happens to be Brandon and Emmanuel. So uh, we understand they're gonna have to come along a little bit faster. But, you know, with us pushing hard in practice and competing at a high level, bringing them along faster, uh, you know, they're going to have, they're going to be able to, you know, help us a lot early on. And it's great for them. And, you know, hopefully that down the road, um, you know, them having to learn a little bit faster and progress a little bit faster that when Ren Raleigh joins us at some point, which he will, uh, we'll just be that much better as a basketball team. Is the Atlanta thing the best case scenario for Raleigh or are you expecting after that? We're not there. Eight to 12 weeks is, is pretty much, and I know that's best case scenario would be 
you know, two months from basically a week ago. Uh, worst case would be, you know, more towards three months from a week ago. Coach Miller, what do you say to Wildcat fans that have concerns about the basketball program, concerns about you? How do you uh, make them feel good about this program after all you guys have gone through? You know, we're just gonna gonna work hard to have the best team we can to do things the right way, like I mentioned in my statement. And uh, I think to, to make everybody proud, um, it's going to be about watching a team grow and uh, become something special. And I think there's a lot that goes into that. Um, but it's something that we're working towards all, already, started last week, and we're going to continue to do the best that we can, like we have really through the eight years that I've been here. Yeah, we got time for a couple more. Sean, with recruiting in a general sense, have you had to change the way you pitch or sell the program here recently? No. What kind of impact for anybody here? What kind of impact does Coach Romar had on the program, in your opinion, uh, in practice? What do you guys have gone through, I guess, in terms of the offense, the defense? What would say his biggest impact in this program has been so far? Alonzo, why don't you start on that one? I think we had um, another coach that's well respected. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, has had great success <clears> in the Pac 12. Um, coach great players, um, pros, um, and I think he gives us um, another element to our coaching staff, you know, that can really teach us some things and, you know, kind of tweak things and make, give us a different perspective of things. And also having a guy like him who's competed against us for so long, um, against Coach Miller in the Arizona program, he sees things in a different light um, than we would at looking at ourselves. So I think that's uh, only a bonus for us. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Just to add up to, to, to what Alonzo said, you know, obviously Coach Roma is a, is a great coach and, you know, in practice he, he, uh, he helps, you know, every, every, to every player. And uh, personally to me, he gave me like so, so much advices since he, since he came here. Uh, you know, the last three years he was kind of on the other side. He was watching me from the different perspective and now, uh, when he's on, a, on our team, he can you know, give us that extra extra advice, and I think having him on this on this year's team is going to benefit all of us. Dusan, what's the biggest change you've seen from DeAndre Ayton from the time he got here to right now? Uh, I mean, since he came here, he has been working really hard in the weight room. So when he showed up here, he was his body was was you know, well mature. He was strong and you know fast. But not even now he continued to work, you know, every day, and now he looks even stronger. And in practice, when I play against him, uh, it's a great challenge for me, because he obviously he's uh, like like coach said he's uh, one of the you know, he's a unique player, and uh, I think playing against him is gonna, gonna benefit me and other big guys. Um, also, you know, he just he just works hard every day, uh, on and off the court. Uh, he does everything that you ask him to. And you know he's a great guy, and he's gonna he's gonna help this year's team, 100%. Tom, so just to clarify, I'm sorry, the, you said Austin's on the court, but do you expect to hire another assistant or or a GA or somebody like that this season? Or being as you have book kind of on leave and, and he's in limbo right now, or or do you wait for him to sell? We're just not there yet. You know, we're we're right now kind of in the moment, and you know, right now how we're doing things is uh, Austin's able to be out on the court. Sean, how much has it helped you practicing against a guy who's an NBA stretch for one year and then now a guy who's this ridiculous athlete and DeAndre the next year? Yeah, uh, it helps me, you know, to, to be more uh, versatile in terms of defending, you know, player outside of the, uh, of the three-point line and inside. Uh, but also, I think it's going to help me too uh, when we play together because last year I had uh, Lowry who was a great outside, of, uh, outside player, perimeter player. And uh, he used to stretch the floor last year, and now we have uh, DeAndre who can bo do those things both, you know, outside of the three-point line and inside. And I think that's going to be a great challenge for all teams that we're going to play against this year, because it's not going to be easy to to guard both of us, you know, at the same time. And I'm really excited to to play alongside with DeAndre. We got time for one more. I guess for anyone, Parker was saying uh, in August that Coach Romarks helped you guys get up and down the floor after mixes and mixes. Is improving a transition a point of emphasis? I mean, obviously when we we're come here, we're going to play defense at a high level. But we're still look, we were still looking to push the ball always. Um, I think Coach Romar gives us a different spin and gives us a 
the perspective on how to do it and, and how he did it when he was at Washington. And it's kind of about Coach Miller and Coach Wilmore, you know, combining their basketball minds and finding the best transition attack for us and how, how we're going to do it this year based on the weapons and the team that we have this year. You know, Lorenzo, he adds a, a, a lot of things on the court, but I, I, to me, the greatest gift that he gives all of us is just who he is as a person off the court. You know, he's, he's somebody that uh, has has been through virtually everything you can be a part of in this game. He's an NBA player himself. Uh, he won a national championship as an assistant coach in the Pac-10 at the time at UCLA. He's been a head coach for 21 consecutive seasons. You know, he's been a head coach for 15 seasons in the Pac-12. Like Alonzo uh, alluded to, you know, the perspective that we gained from him is some things that, that they really appreciated about our style, that they worried about, and maybe some things that, that they would try to take advantage of. So it's almost like, you know, you get a chance to, to be inside the opponent's mind. And he also has a tremendous familiarity with the Pac-12. But, you know, above and beyond that, just uh, a voice of reason, you know, somebody that has, uh, I think, really had a tremendous impact on everybody, our staff and our team, because uh, you can't help but respect him as a person. And uh, to have him with us is uh, very meaningful. All right. Thank you, guys.